Hello and welcome to week 10 of the Orion Bowl Fantasy NFL League. I'm Commissioner Burt, Commissioner of the Orion Bowl Fantasy NFL League. Now this video is mostly for the guys in my league. Uh, of course, if you're following along and you're not in the league, just you know, there's a lot of good fantasy advice in there. If you look at the right teams, I'm looking at you know the Harlots and uh, and the Suns mostly. Um, but you also get to join in the in the in the glory and the disappointments. And let me tell you, this league is chock full of disappointments, uh, crushing ones usually but yeah let's start off by taking a recap of week nine and i like to do this with my mad at well, it's madden ultimate team but it's for the orion bowl so it's the orion bowl ultimate team i like to get every position every uh position and put it together in one team so at quarterback cj stroud obviously 41.8 took took baby drop dak to a win over Hot Toilet. He should have beaten Hot Toilet anyway, but God damn it. No wonder he dropped Dak when you've got CJ Stroud putting up 41 points. I mean, Houston is just moving the ball through the air so goddamn well. Running back one, Rashad White. Baltimore Ravens got him in a blockbuster trade, got rid of that trash. Madison managed to get Rashad White, but in then he was rewarded with the highest scoring running back of week nine in our league. Anyway, in our league, he was the, he was the highest scoring running back, uh, 23.9. Uh, managed to get do a real drubbing beat down on the team with no shame, a nice six point drubbing there. Enjoyed it. Running back to Josh Jacobs. 21.80 was not enough. Uh, no, it was enough. Sorry, it was. Yeah, it was enough to take the team with no Namath to his sixth fluke win of the season. So congratulations on, on that. Then wide receiver one, you have George Pickens. Minus 0.10. Now, you've got to have a lot of confidence to play a wide receiver who is going to put up minus numbers. But the Gorillas have that confidence. They have that championship mindset because they are the best team in the league because they managed to smash, really thump, the three-time champions, the Harlots, despite putting up a wide receiver with negative points. That takes some real cojones, and I absolutely love seeing it. Best team in the league. Tank Dell. Also on the Gorillas, he ignored my advice, as you should. You should always ignore the advice of the commissioner. Because I said, look, you should not be playing two wide receivers on the same team. When they move the ball through the air as well as Houston, you could play three receivers on their team for all I care. And you know what? Tank Dell putting up 23.6. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Then you have at tight end King Komet of the Forbes Niners. It was a brilliant performance from the Forbes Niners. He dry humped the coach's sons up and down the fantasy field and we love to see that we really love to see the coach's sons just drag down to our level a little bit because he's, he's too good man get down here come on swim around here and the in the wallow in the filth with the rest of us you filthy sons huh sons are bitches <laughs> anyway then you've got young hoku uh put up 18 which is coincidentally a great age for a young hoku no? See what I did? Because of a... He's a kicker. Anyway, he's a kicker. 18. If you get an 18 from your kicker, you're probably going to win. And obviously, he's on baby drop Dak. So, yeah, they did get the win. And the sweep D of the week goes to the Indianapolis Colts. It still was not enough to get the team with no shame of a win over the glorious, magnanimous Burton Moore Ravens. And so, when you put all that together, the week nine... Uh, Orion Bowl ultimate score is 172.50. So let's then move on to week number 10. And we'll start off with the primetime game. You've got Burtonmore Ravens against the team with no Namath. Now there are there, there's a lot on the line here because obviously I beat their B team last week. They beat me in the first week. So it's one to one. It, we're, we're level currently. We're one to one. Uh, I want to get the, I want to just sneak in front. And uh, obviously if I do sneak in front, then that means I'll go into the playoffs, albeit temporarily. And uh, if the team with no name wins, then my playoff dreams are shattered for another week. So let's dig into each position. Josh Allen versus Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray obviously makes his return this week, but Josh Allen is against the Denver Broncos. So you've got to believe that Josh Allen is going to put up more points than Kyler crap shoot Murray. God damn it. And you've got Jonathan Taylor against Josh Jacobs. Um, I don't massively like the matchup. Uh, for, well, I, 
I don't like the matchup for Josh Jacobs because I feel like it's a very good matchup for Josh Jacobs, if that if you, if you follow. He's against the New York Jets, my New York Jets, and you've got to believe that the, the Vegas are going to go ahead. They're going to go ahead early. They're going to go ahead a lot. And it means that what you do when you're ahead, you run that football. And obviously, Jacobs is there running back. So you've got to think that Jacobs is going to edge out Jonathan Taylor there. Travis Etienne versus Chuba Hubbard. Chuba Hubbard has already played. He's put up 3.9. So Travis Etienne... With the greatest of respect, I do believe he's going to do better than 3.9. So I'll lean towards ETN in that one. Adam Thielen really disappointed me with a nice 4.20. So he's going up against CD Lamb, who is obviously going to put up more than that. Then you've got Michael Pittman against Chris Olave. I think it's going to be much of a much I think Pittman, he's the number one wide receiver. The only reason I traded away Olave is just because... He's like, you know, he's in the mix with three wide receivers and it's not clear which one's like really pulling ahead. But that being said, because Olave is in a revenge game against his old team, me, the Baltimore Ravens, that means that Olave is, is going to win that one. Taysom Hill against Hawkinson. If Hawkinson plays, it's Hawkinson all day. Hawkinson's been absolutely outstanding. Although Taysom Hill has been on fire lately. It's why I've kept him in. Until he stops performing, I have to play him. Because any time they get into like, you know, those like first and goal situations, they often put Taysom Hill in and he'll run it in, which is which is fantastic. That's what you want. Uh, I've really done well with tight ends this year. I mean, my, my backup is Laporta. And when Laporta is your backup tight end, you know you're doing something right. Now you've got Rashad White against Johnson. I've got to go with Rashad White in that one because he's just... Yeah, he's against Tennessee. Uh, Tucker versus McManus. I think that actually the Cleveland game should be quite a kick-friendly game just because... Yeah, you know, the, the the defense in Cleveland are good enough to stop uh, Baltimore and maybe you know stop them for a few field goals. That's all I'm hoping for anyway. Buccaneers D versus the Jaguars D. The Jaguars are probably the better defense, but the Buccaneers probably have the better matchup because they're against Tennessee, whereas the Jags are against San Francisco. So I'll lean towards the Buccaneers in that one now. I don't know who's going to win this one. I think on balance, uh, the team with no Namath have the the better matchups. But to quote the late great. Kevin Keegan, I will love it if I beat you. And I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm not really, really even going to make a prediction. Um, I'm going to predict that Namath. I think Namath probably have the better matchups, if I'm honest. So, gun to my head. If someone was putting a gun to my head, I'd probably lead towards the team with no Namath. But I would love it if I beat you. <laughs> anyway, we'll go to the team with no shame against the Legion of Hot Toilet. Uh, Joe Burrow versus Geno Smith. I do like Joe Burrow's matchup because I think that they're going to get into a shootout against the Houston Texans. Uh, Geno Smith is good. Like the Washington defense has been pretty good. Geno Smith is probably going to have a, an uphill battle there. So I'll go with Joe Burrow. Eckler against Mixon. Uh, I think that, yeah, it's going to be a shootout. So I think Eckler's probably going to have, I don't know, actually Mixon's been much more. I'm going to go with Eckler in that one. Uh, Washington's Robinson against Aaron Jones. I mean, the the... The Green Bay running game has not been good this season, so I'm going to go with Robinson in that one. Keenan Allen versus Amari Cooper. I like Amari Cooper there, despite the Baltimore secondary has been pretty good, but Amari Cooper is also very good. Keenan Allen, he's old and he's past it and he's terrible. He should go away. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm, oh, God, that was so horrible. Anyway, uh, DK Metcalf against Amara St. Brown. I think Amara St. Brown pops off this week. I really do. I think the... Um, You've got your uh, Detroit guys this week. That I think they're going to be the difference makers. Uh, Smith versus Schultz. I like Schultz. So he's on the Houston offense, which is just popping right now. No reason to bet against him. Uh, Cook versus Montgomery. Montgomery all day. When Montgomery's fit, he is a destroyer. Uh, Dicker versus Joseph. Dicker the kicker. Got to go with Dicker the kicker. You've got to go with the fun names, haven't you? Uh, I think he's got a decent matchup with Detroit there as well. The Colts, D versus the Seahawks, D. I think that the Colts D uh, against New England, they're probably going to have another good day. I like, I quite like them uh, to get the win. So on balance, I think the Legion of Hot Toilet take it mostly due to their Detroit players. If Detroit don't perform, then I think the Legion of Hot Toilet will uh, will fall out. But I think Detroit will perform. So my final pick is the Legion of Hot Toilet. That's my pick. Then you've got the Arizona Tits against the Dennis Trey Gorillas. You've got... Dak Prescott against Russell Wilson. Dak Prescott all day. He's playing the New York Giants, who are an awful lot like the Legion of Hot Toilet in a lot of ways. There's a lot of comparisons to be made. Uh, they are the trash team in New York. Not by much. My New York Jets have tried really hard to be as trash as the Giants, but the Giants keep on like edging us. So I don't even know what to do with that. The, the Jets can't even suck bad enough to be the worst team in New York, even, though, even when we're doing so terrible. Anyway... 
Uh, then you've got Matteson versus Pollard. Pollard all day. Pollard's playing the Giants, and Matteson is in a running back by committee on a team that aren't really moving the ball particularly well on the ground. Uh, Jerome Ford versus Brees Hall. I actually like Brees Hall's matchup against the Raiders because Brees Hall's one of the few parts of the Jets offense that are really performing well. So he gets a lot of the ball. I think that he's going to get a good match this week. Uh, Diggs versus Collins. I actually like Collins to edge Diggs in that one just because Collins... Oh, Collins is out. Oh, Collins isn't even questionable. He's out. So with that being said, I think that Diggs can probably put up more points than somebody who's not going to play. But then again, look, the Dallas Trey Gorillas played a wide receiver that put up minus points last week, and he still won the game. So it's that mindset. It's that championship mindset. He's playing someone who's not even going to play because he's so confident he's still going to win. It's, I love it. I absolutely love that mindset. It's wonderful to see. Uh, Rashid Shahid, uh, I don't know why you put him in your lineup. Honestly, you must be really struggling for wide receivers, uh, Ali Zayna, because Rashid Shahid, like, after he's given the whole league nothing but disappointments, really. Like, he, put, he had one really good week, and then literally any time you put him in, he put, so he's, it's just nothing, absolutely nothing. So like what, why you would put him back in is beyond me, especially against Tank Dell. Tank Dell is obviously, with Collins out, Tank Dell is going to probably put up 30 points. Then you've got Mark Andrews against Evan Ingram. Uh, Mark Andrews is the better tight end. Ingram's got the better matchup. Um... Andrews, go with Andrews. Uh, Mayers versus Murray, Mayers all day. I don't really, uh, other than a red zone threat, Murray's not really doing an awful lot for me at Buffalo. Buffalo don't move the ball on the ground particularly well. They rely too much on on uh, Josh Allen, which is great for me, incidentally, because he's putting up numbers. Uh, Matt Gay versus uh, Aubrey. I think Aubrey has a great matchup, but so does Gay, honestly, and Gay has the better name for a kicker, which I enjoy, so uh, we'll go for Gay in that one. Bills D versus Steelers D, well, the Bills are playing Denver Broncos, so you've got to believe that the, their, their defense is probably going to put up more points. So on balance, I do think that um, the Dallas Trey Gorillas, you can't, you cannot, like, you know, momentum is a thing. You can't bet against momentum, so you've got to go with the Dallas Trey Gorillas in that one. Then you've got Baby Drop D Dak, against uh, the coach's sons. Good matchup, this one. So you've got CJ Stroud against Justin Herbert. On current form, Stroud by a landslide. Um, I think it's going to be a shootout with Cincinnati as well. So I, I like that matchup. Uh, Alvin Kamara against uh, Christian McCaffrey. Look, Christian McCaffrey, when he has a bad week, he does more than 20 points. So you can't bet against McCaffrey in that one. Robinson versus Gibbs. Uh, Gibbs is now going to be sharing the load with... Sharing the loads with uh, Montgomery. So you've got to believe that Robinson's going to have the better numbers there. D-Hop versus Mike Evans. Mike Evans has been on fire. I absolutely love what the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have been doing with Baker Mayfield. And he's been linking up with, uh, with Evans a lot. Evans by a landslide. Uh, Kirk versus Cooks. I don't know why you continue to pay Cooks. He's terrible. Um, he doesn't get a lot of the ball. Kirk in that one for me. Uh, George Kittle versus Kincaid. Kincaid is... He's the future Kelsey. So look. He's against Denver. He puts up ridiculous numbers. George Kittle will feel terrible about the numbers he puts up and he'll have a horrible week. But I wish him all the best. Um, Gus Edwards, Gus the bus uh, against Mitchell. Mm. Yeah, it's got to be Gus the bus. Gus the bus has just been on fire lately. Although Cleveland, they do stop that run. So, mm, I don't know. Tough matchup. Tough, 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 tough. But, I mean, I don't know why you play Mitchell, the backup to... Edwards, that seems like an odd decision to me. But, I'm at, but look, the coach's sons are doing way better than me. So who am I to question their bizarre decision make <laughs> makings? Uh, then you've got the Browns versus the Raiders. Browns are the better defense. Raiders have the better matchup. I'll go with the Browns still. I think the Browns probably get that one done. And then you've got uh, overall... On balance, I think that Baby baby Drop Dak, they're on fire at the moment. I think that they will hand the coach's sons another loss. Then you've got the San Diego Harlots taking on the Forbes Niners in another scintillating matchup. You got Will Levis. Will, what? Will Levis? Will Levis against uh, Jared Goff. I mean, Goff should get the better of that one. I don't know why you play Levis. Is Levis good? I don't even know. He might not. Uh, Levis? 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 Uh, Dante Foreman versus Derek Henry. Foreman's put up a respectable score, 15.20. You have to believe that somebody of the calibre of Derek Henry is going to be able to do better than that, though. So it will, he'll either equal that or better it, I reckon. Uh, Squam Barkley against Rodre Stevenson. Uh, that's not a great matchup for the Patriots. I like Barkley. Barkley, although... 
Barkley might get scripted out because the Giants are going to get pummeled by Dallas and they're, they're going to have to throw the ball. And that means that Barkley's not really going to see very much of it. So I don't think either of them are going to put up particularly good numbers, if I'm honest. Uh, you've got Adams versus Moore. Moore has put up 5.9. You've got to believe that Devontae Adams can beat a 5.9. I mean, if, if you don't believe that, then what are we even doing? You know, what, what, what are we doing? Yeah. Adams in that one. Uh, Sutton versus Addison. Addison's been on fire. It greatly depends on whether Jefferson returns or not. But look, Addison's been an absolute pillar of the uh, wide receiver core for Minnesota. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. So I'm going with Addison in that one. Uh, McBride versus King Komet. King Komet put up a disappointing 4.6. So McBride, that's left the door open for McBride to get some big numbers. I don't think they'll be huge, but I think he beats a 4.6. Uh, Walker versus Najee Harris. Uh, I do like Najee Harris's matchup in that one. Uh, although I like Walker as well, but Najee Harris, I think he has the better matchup, honestly. Uh, Falk. Versus T Bass. I like um, T Bass against Denver. Yeah, T Bass is probably going to get the win there. And uh, Cowboys D against the Jets D. Look, the Jets D are the better matchup, uh, are the, are the better defense, but their offense can't move the ball. So they're on the field far too much, and then they end up lit, letting up points. The Cowboys defense will not have that problem because they're playing the New York Giants, who are really struggling to score. Uh, at all so uh, the Cowboys D are the play in that one and they're going to put up some ridiculous numbers so on balance I think I've probably just about I mean without Tyreek Hill who's obviously on a bye this week oh, I, th I just think that the Forbes e Niners the Forbes e Niners are going to be too much for those Harlots the Harlots are going to be like no I can't I can't take any more Forbes e Niners please please stop oh no this is sounding terrible now anyway I'm just going to say Forbes e Niners will win uh, that's that's my pick and that's all I've got time for this week if I've picked you to win prove me right if I've picked you to lose prove me wrong see you next time